What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over directional jumps and jump attacks in the fighting game tutorial. So just to get us started here, we are 22 episodes into the fighting game tutorial, so we've done quite a bit to get to this point. Uh, if you'd like to catch up in the series or even start all the way from the beginning, I'll put an icon in the top right corner right now to the very first episode. That way you can kind of know where we, uh, you know, what we had to do to get here and what steps we've gone through to make the game better over time. If you are just interested in the directional jumps or if you're caught up in the series, great. Well, we're going to get started right now then. So, uh, in this episode specifically, we're going to be adding directional jumps. So we already had this standing jump where you jump up and down. You stop at a certain frame, usually the last frame of the animation, but it can be whatever frame you choose. And now we're going to add directional jumps. So this would not look great as a jump if we were going sh uh, like moving while we jump. So I've added these directional jumps, which are essentially jumps with a different animation. That's a forward jump. You can also do a backward jump. Now the animations, uh, don't get me wrong, aren't the best for this anyway, but these are free Mixamo animations. If you need to know how to import Mixamo animations, we also have a video for that. But these are free animations you can get online, so I just kind of grabbed some. I did spend about an hour grabbing animations for this episode and realized, wait a second, it doesn't really matter if they look all that good because it they can use their own animations so rip an hour of my time but anyway uh yeah so we have backward jump forward jump uh we also have jump attacks so we have like this little drop kick thing it's very quick but this is your forward jump attack and then we have a back attack so if you're backward jumping you like this little whatever that is <laughs> sky stab i don't know i just again pick some random air attack animations but there we go also in this episode we're going to cover uh, getting rid of all the characters air control while they're in the air so if I actually jump I can hold the other direction and I won't have any influence over my character in the air so essentially once you've jumped you're set on a specific path based on your speed and all that so you won't have any air control after you've jumped which is pretty common in fighting games there are fighting games without it so feel free to skip that part when we get to it but just want to show you we can also do that um, and I think I think that's about it for now, so let's get started on the actual episode. Alright, so code-wise, luckily we're not really doing anything this time. I say luckily uh, just because it keeps it cleaner to not have to switch between code and blueprint in one episode, admittedly. Uh, you know, not a big deal either way, but I like doing either just code or just blueprint when possible, and this is just a blueprint one. However, I did want to show you, I did change this enum name. I was calling it e-directional input in prior episodes because originally it was just being used to detect if we were moving left or right. But I decided to use this enum for our character state, such as not moving, moving right or left, jumping. You could also use it for crouching and things like that. So I did rename it. So if you see e-character state, this is the old e-directional input. I've also changed the enum instance from uh, directional input to character state. And you see I can update, I have updated the comment. Current state of the character, moving, jumping, and more. Uh, so if you decide to do this route because the other one was a little bit confusing, great. If you don't, no problem at all. Maybe you already named it something better than I did because you're not a fool like me. But uh, yeah, so that's all. That's all we're going to do. There is one, literally one line we're going to change in code uh, pretty much at the end here, but for now it doesn't matter. So we'll keep this as is. I'll keep the code open, but this is going to be basically a blueprint only episode minus one line of code. And if you happen to change the enum name, just know if you do change the enum name, you do have to also change it in the anim BP. So that might be a little bit of extra work for you. It only took me about five minutes to change everything over, so it's not a huge amount of work, but keep that in mind. All right, guys, so what we're going to do today, and I know I say that a lot, but that's just kind of my segue. So <laughs> how we get started, there we go, that's a different one, is we're going to add different states for our anim BP. So in the previous episodes, we had start jump and end jump. So start jump essentially is an animation that gets the player off of the ground. So you can see originally he is basically touching the ground or about as, as close to the ground as we wanted him to be as we trimmed it a bit. He jumps and when he starts to fall we say okay that's a good way to stop. 
All right, we don't want to necessarily progress this animation. We trimmed it because before he landed on the ground and like hunched us over. Well, that's really slow for a jump in a fighting game. So we also had this um, this end jump, which literally is just a solid frame, but it's the last frame of the animation. So you could also just set it not to loop, but if you had a separate animation for falling or just ending your vertical jump, and there you go, set this here. And we did that all in the last episode, but I'm bringing it up because we are going to kind of branch off of that and use that functionality in this next episode, or in this episode. So what we want to do is take our walking forward and walking back word uh, states that we set in the prior episode, and we want to add jump to each of those and an attack from the jump. So it's literally like a tree here. It's not too hard. It's only one node each. So from the walking forward node, we only have one transition. So you can drag off of this and hit add state. I called mine forward jump. If you go into forward jump, I have this forward jump animation, which looks like this. Uh, I keep clicking the wrong thing. Sorry about that. And forward jump cannot return to walking forward because we don't want him to be walking in the air. That would look weird. We want to go from his forward jump to an end jump, which is, again, that singular frame animation that we had. Uh, you could also have separate ending jumps for your uh, forward jump, back jump, and just regular jump. So feel free to do that if you want. I didn't feel it was necessary, and I didn't feel like finding animations for it. But... It's literally the same thing. You just drag from your forward jump and from your backward jump, because from walking backward, we do the same thing. And uh, the transition from forward jump to end jump, or backward jump to end jump, is literally just nothing in it. So what we do is go to, click on the little transition, go to details and the transition panel, uh, automatic rule based on you know whatever this crazy long term is I always forget what it actually stands for based on sequence player and state essentially what this means is if there's not another animation for it to go to when this animation is done playing just automatically go to this node I'm gonna clean up some of these these were actually from me changing the um, that one enum over you can see they're all character state now instead of directional input Okay. So the way we get from walking forward and walking backward to forward jump and backward jump is as easy as you can imagine. We literally do a transition where we get our mutant character reference. We already have it as a variable down here. We get our character state or our directional input, whatever yours is called, and we just check if we're jumping. We don't have to do any logic to determine if we're moving right or pressing right or anything like that because if we're walking forward, in this animation, we already know that we're walking forward. Now, forward doesn't mean right or left. Uh, as we determined in the last episode, it depends on what direction you're facing, but it, basically it means you're walking toward your opponent. So if we're walking toward our opponent or moving toward our opponent, then if, we're, if we uh, have this state that's jumping, well, then we want to do the forward jump because we are walking forward. Same way here. If we're walking backward, we're walking away from our opponent, regardless of what direction we're facing. We're walking away from our opponent, so if we jump, this is the exact same transition, when we're walking away from our opponent, we're doing our backward jump. And our backward jump looks like this. Okay. So, like I said, transition to your end jump uh, if it doesn't transition to your attacks first. So basically, I'll show you in the game. But if I'm not to do an attack and I just do a forward jump, you see I go to my, you can see a few, like a second before I hit the ground, I go into my end frame, or my end jump, singular frame animation. Feel free to not do that, set it up however you want, that's how I set it up, because I thought it was nice and neat and better than stopping on the random last frame of the forward jump or backward jump animations, but that's why I do that. Now, to do attacks in the air is, honestly, you probably can guess about how if you've been following the series, because... We did crouch attacks this way, we did regular and directional attacks this way. We did pretty much all the attacks this way, and that's the whole reason I like to set up the system the way I do. Basically, once you get an attack down, 
you can kind of use it for whatever you want. You can use it in the air, you can use it while you're crouching, you can use it to do reversals if you're doing things like that where they require certain inputs. You just check this one Boolean. So how we're gonna do it, if we're doing a forward jump, we're gonna do our forward jump attack. That's what FJ attack is. And then back jump attack or backward jump attack. So forward jump is going to have one transition to forward jump attack and it's just going to check our mutant character reference was light attack used or whatever key you want to use for light attack for me is basic punch so remember i'll show you this i know we show it in about every episode but it's one of the most important things so attack one p1 if i could find it this is p2 there we go we have rebound controls so that's why they're all mixed up i promise i'm not this uh messy <laughs> it was clean at one point but the way we rebind our controls kind of has to force that to be separate so for whatever reason it's g because i guess that's what i set it to last when i rebound my controls so if i press g that means light attack was used so if light attack was used and i'm in my jump well i don't have to check anything else remember i'm already jumping we know that so all we have to do if this button was pressed then we do our forward jump attack and it looks like this All right. Now, if I go back, all right. Then what we want to do is basically check our or send our forward jump attack back to our end jump. So essentially, do the exact same thing we did from forward jump to end jump. Basically, you don't have anything in the transition, but you click on the transition node and just make sure it's automatically going to return to it once the animation is done. We are jumping forward and we perform our attack. It's our light attack in this case. We do our forward attack. If I'm trying to jump backward and do the same attack, it will not work. There you go. Um, now the backward attack looks like this. I'll do it here while it's already loaded up. It's this little like drop kick that he does that ends kind of prematurely, but there you go. We do the exact same thing on the other side. So instead of forward jump attack, when you're doing your backward jump, you just check if medium attack was used or whatever key. You can use your light key again, it doesn't matter. I just did a different button just to show it that it works. So this is when I press my E key, that's my medium key, medium attack key. Then I do my back jump attack, which looks like this. Then, I just make sure when the animation is done, I automatically transition to my end jump. Remember, end jump will always take us back to idle. Once we've uh, hit the ground, that's what this not moving character state actually means. It means we're on the ground and not walking. Regardless, if you're holding a direction when you land, you will go back to not moving uh, when you've landed based on code we set in the prior episode. I will remind you just so you kind of get an idea of how this works. In the landed overridden function that we did last time, we set the character state to be default. So no matter what, as long as you've landed on the ground, you will go back to default. That is why this works. You can feel free to make a new state called landed or something like that. And if that makes you feel better or if it makes more sense, because I understand that can be a bit confusing, but you really don't need another state there. And there's the state machine, guys. So now you have all your attacks set up, all your animations. Uh, you do have directional jumps working now since you have walking backward goes the backward jump and walking forward goes the forward jump. The only thing that we don't really have is uh, we want to control our, we want to make sure that our air control is not, is virtually nothing. We want to make sure that our character cannot be controlled by inputs while he's in the air. You would uh, flip in the air kind of funny if you were to just rotate the character when you jumped over them without waiting for them to hit the ground. And it would actually change the controls you have to press because essentially since you've changed directions, your logic will no longer apply for uh, what key you're pressing. So we're just gonna eliminate all those issues right now. Go to your mutant character VP click on your character movement component of it and go to uh, the details panel. I already typed it in, but it'll look like this. You can either type in air control or air or control or whatever, but Unreal already does this for you. This should be, I think it's like one by default or something, but uh, just go to character movement, jumping and falling, set air control to be zero 
If it's one, you'll be able to have control over your character in the air. If you have zero, you have zero control of the character in the air. So once you leave the ground, you can do attacks, whatever, but you can't move them left or right at all. You can also minimize this, like if you did want to have them, if you did want them to have some control, you could make it like 0 0.2. That's how you set that up. Lastly, guys, since we don't want to flip the characters in the air, uh, the other part of that, not just the air control, but the other part is to actually stop the character's meshes from flipping in the air. So if you scroll down in the fighter template CPP or whatever your project name is, character.cpp class, go to the tick function where we've been flipping the characters. We're going to not flip the characters if we are jumping. So just check if your character state or directional input is VE jumping. And then if it is, don't do this, or in my case, if it's not jumping, then do the rest of this logic. So since it's on tick, when he hits the ground, it will automatically work. At that point, you can see, because of the way it's set up, um, the other character will still flip and turn toward you. So you're not facing completely different directions. He is watching you. But you just wait, because you're not going to turn around in the air. That would be kind of weird. Again, if you want to do that for whatever reason, it's totally fun. I'm sure there's fighting games that do both of these. But just want to show you how to get that done. So that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Uh, I do want to mention a bug, or not really a bug, but something that will look like a bug, and it's just because we haven't handled it yet. If you jump in the air and press an attack button, you will do the attack when you hit the ground. Now, this can be very frustrating if you're actually trying to play this game because, well, obviously, I, you know, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do some air attack. Now, there's two ways to fix it. One way would obviously just be literally have a control for every button you press that doesn't attack on the ground for the air, but that's a lot of work and honestly that's forcing it, so there's no real reason to do that. We will handle this in the next episode because we're going to start getting into air combat, air launchers, things like that. We won't do it, you know, it's going to be a few episodes, but within this next set of episodes we will handle this issue because it, the way we handle it depends on how we want to handle our launchers and air combos. Uh, and I'll, sh I'll talk more about that in the next episode. But just in case you notice that, don't worry. You haven't done anything wrong. It does exist, and it is um, kind of a bug. But it's more just something we haven't handled yet and will handle in the future. All right, guys. So, like I said, that's it for today's episode. If you have any issues or want any help, feel free to reach out to me on in the comments. I will gladly answer all of them. Uh, if you want more personalized help or help from other members in the community, feel free to join the Discord. We have over 100 members now, and we can share pictures and videos and things like that and get issues solved out or solved a lot more quickly. So, perfect there. And lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on something other than YouTube, you can come check us out on Twitch at SeanTheBro27. We do Souls Wednesday, which is a bunch of Souls games, so Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Demon Souls, uh, Sekiro, all those. And we do Resident Evil Friday, which is what it sounds like when we're done with Resident Evil, we're going to switch over to just like Scary Games Friday, um, or Horror Games Friday or something. You know, I know that's a pretty standard one, but who doesn't like watching horror games? I mean, let's be honest, they're the best genre to watch, come on. Anyway, guys, so I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, my friends.